Consider supporting Sonic Guru Productions on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description. But anyway, moving back onto Sonic, and this is something that A pisses me off for two reasons. Mm. And B was kind of predictable. I'm more surprised particularly what it is than well again just the fact it happened. Yeah. So ever since the South by Southwest, it was announced that we're gonna get an update to Sonic Sonic Mania as Sonic Mania Plus, which is gonna have some physical re- release. Well not be a risk physical release with a holographic cover and an art book, but it's also mm. gonna have an on call mode, a four player competition, and mining of race playable characters. Exactly, because which is that's good. That's a good incentive for a re-release. It's basically yeah. is it is this, but with all this. Mm. It turns out it's like it's not just a physical release. It's also it's also be, an update. It's also an update and a DLC pack for those who actually bought the game on on all the systems. Mm. So the only reason to actually get the physical release is to say you have a physical release with an art book. And right, mm. considering I'm an artist, I want the fucking art book. <laughs> Though. Again, thinking how they normally do, because again, I, let's be fair, this is an age where there's always special editions of every major release and they always have an art book, which is like, what? A lot of people. Pages? A lot of people uh, now some, some art books have up to like 30 to 60 pages. Yeah. On average, it's 60. And it's like, okay, here's the environments, here's the characters, and here's. Um, Most items. of the stuff you can see, promotional stuff. Yeah. And a few, promo- and a few um, scans of the promotional stuff for the marketing. So yeah. that's pretty good. Like, even though, even though I used, I owned the Alone in the Dark Wii version, Collector's Edition. Yeah. That came with a music CD, a model of um, Edward Carnby, and yeah. an art book. The model was meh. Music CD was, music is actually pretty good. That was actually yeah, pretty yeah. well constructed music. You just play that in the background and you can scare yeah. the shit out of someone alone with that. <laughs> and the art book. Even though it's a shit game, the Wii version is so fucking shit. Like, get the Wii Mart and the Nunchuck, and you're like, open oh, oh, the jacket, open oh, the jacket, open oh, the really? fucking jacket! Door! <laughs> yeah, open the door. You, you think the actual controls for Amnesia was intuitive, like, they were doing this, people were doing all motion controls before them, Bows. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, there's that. Yeah. Um, but I looked at the art books, like, it's a very well detailed art book. I like having art. Like, I also got the Zelda art. Art and Artifacts book. Mm. Like, I fucking love that. Every single item, some of it's been redrawn to actually show it in full detail. And <laughs> even had some, and that was released before Breath of the Wild, so it has some promotional art in that as well. Yeah. So, the art, for me, art books are pretty much a joy, but everyone else is like, why should I care? I, want, I just want the game, I want the finished product. Like, if, you, if you're interested in gaming enough to actually want to be a game designer or be involved in the gaming me- industry, the art book is pretty much interest. It pretty much a key to get in. Hmm. I will say this. I mean, again, there's a lot of again. If you want big proper art of whatever certain things, I mean, there's always going to be in bookshops. I mean, ironically, there's been a Crash Bandicoot thing. It's not an art book, but it's more like the pages and documents from making into the first game, like literally old notes and emails, fax <laughs> fax prints from Naughty Dog. And again, that's actually made as a book, which is. Again, I would say that's more of a look into actually the day-to-day life of how developing a game goes. And again, the fact that exists kind of flop against me. You, but anyway, you even have the Art of Naughty Dog book as well. I do have the Art of Naughty Dog, which ironically, it's got a few pictures of Crash, but not too much. Again, again there was a whole hoo-ha of are they allowed to, whatever. But anyway, yeah. let's get back to Mania. Because, like you said, the whole big business with the update, it's been it's accidentally been leaked. leaked. <laughs> and typical gaming, you know, once it's slinked, everybody knows of it, and they're going to tell you about it. Yeah, apparently the PS4 in the United States... Um, and here, it, apparently. Was it? Okay. Yeah, as well as um, here. At noon, a few, day, on a few days ago, they, they released the update, and for those who had automatic updates on the system, got it. And Sega shut down the update within the hour... But they didn't stop people from getting that update and playing it and streaming it, and and you've spoiled and it's been spoiled. All the updates and changes have been spoiled beyond belief. Now, to be fair, if you're new to this, ladies and gentlemen, Dan doesn't like it when people spoil things early. This is one thing you hear a lot from him. I don't like it when people people spoil. I really fucking don't. Because mm. it's like congratulations, you've seen it, you've played it, you've experienced it. 
We haven't yet. <laughs> Your experience is not going to reflect into my experience because my experience is null. Mm. So, Other than I wish I had yours instead. That's the only thing. Yeah. And because you told me everything about it and you showed me, it ruins the surprise completely out. Mm. And we're not going to tell, say anything, but all I can say is there are some subtle changes, like stuff that was kept out of the initial release, now being brought back in or revised. Yeah. And there's a major change in the game, which I'm not going to spoil because even I was fucking surprised. <laughs> but the one thing we can't, I will say, is the main menu is changed. Instead of actually being a grid like in Sonic Heroes, it's now an angle and it's a simple drop. Like, yeah. Like it was in Sonic 06 or Sonic Forces. I was going to say, it reminded me bizarrely enough of like Sonic 4 2 for some reason. I don't know. It's like every time you switch, it has a little picture on the side showing you, which is actually like a little GIF. Yeah. Um, I will say this. I won't spoil again, uh, but then again, half of you probably will do already for us. But anyway, what I will say is that what they've added to the game, in a weird way, it's nothing substantial. It's not like they changed the physics or they changed the layout or any of that stuff. It's mostly more consistency to how the game is done. Which, again, when you think about it, when you hear about updates to games, normally they're there to fix problems, issues, or graphical fidelities that didn't get right in the first hour or whatever. And yet, the fact they've done this, it's bizarre to see an update like this, because, again, it's the kind of thing you often hear developers talking about, if we had time, we would have done blah. So it is weird even to see it, Even though it this. was delayed about three months. Yeah, it was. But then again, you know, it's always the whole thing with... You know, people have always said one of the reasons why Sonic games don't work half the time is because they're just rushed out into market. Then again, you know, you can go an entire argument about the that. The downside from what I'm seeing from reactions of some, some of the leaks and what's been changed is like, why the fuck did you include it in the first place? Or this one made the game a much, much better game if you actually include this in the first time around. It's like, again, it's time and money. It's called time management. You didn't have time, time. and money. It's time and money, kids. Yeah. It's like, because it's, good, it's very well to actually accuse these people of not doing their time and not doing anything, but at least you got the product, and it's not exactly making the game better, it's just making it a bit more visually appealing, even though it's one of the most well-reviewed games since Sonic Rush. Yeah. In my opinion, anyway. But even then, no, I was going to say, I mean, I'd be interested in how many other people, if you're out there, if you did like Rush, tell us, you know, and see what you think. Yeah, because it's like, was well, Nintendo magazine in the UK give it a 91% and gave Rush of yeah, the exact same, sure. exact same result? Yeah. But they fucking hated Black Knight, though. Hated yeah, well, it. Yeah. So it's funny because, again, I will say the one thing those two games did was the list feature, which ended up in Generations, which I still believe to this day is the one thing I wish the, they would bring back and continue. The skill, the skill shop, yeah. Skill list. Yeah, the skill list, because I do think that's a secret weapon to actually making these games more fun to replay, but that's another story. Yeah, there's something about Mania Plus I was going to set, talk about. But the, uh, oh, it felt about also time and management is well thing as well. It's like, even me in school, I had bad time management when I was in school doing um, coursework and essays. Hmm. It's like, I can't, I can't find it in myself to blame these, these people for rushing a game, but even, my, even myself can't do simple schoolwork. No. Like, yes, it's important on both spectrums, but if it comes to a deadline, they have to produce something. Mm. Like, there's so much you can delay a game before, before you become a new Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, this is how the gaming industry is where there's always stories about, you know, they had to get it rushed or the deadline was pushed further. I mean, hell, I was at university and the amount of times we were given extensions to our deadlines was bizarre. But even then... Mind you, you, had, you had an animation call. I know, but even then, the reason we had extensions was because things that were at the university didn't work, therefore we couldn't really do anything about it. So again, there's the reason for having extensions. Oh, you were you basically good outside, in, outside interruptions rather than just self-destruction. Exactly. And like I said, it's funny again, because if you look at this, I mean, considering the 
considering obviously there's a difference between delaying a game. And when you compare like Rise of I mean, everybody knows about Rise of the Six. They were rushed games to get it on a certain time and some budget, blah, blah. That's why those games failed big time. But then you look at Mania, which again, the whole point is these are fan made. These are bringing these people who did this as a hobby or maybe as a semi-professional career, bringing them into the actual gaming industry and saying, got to make this game. It's got to run. It's got to do this. got to do that. Blah, blah, blah. Schedule, time, budget, all this good stuff. And that's the real issue. And it's funny enough. And even then, even then, you have to, it, again, to those who are actually criticizing the original release compared to this updated release, like, you still bought the game, and the game itself is still good. Even mm. I would argue it's a bit too good. <laughs> to make it a bit, you know what? Eh. I don't know. I mean, you could have an argument about exactly how too good a game could be or whatever. But again, funny enough, I recently saw a video on the TimeSpurs Rewind project from actually an ex-developer. And particularly, he laid out more or less one of the reasons why it's gone through this kind of hellhole, because it was announced and it's been in development for a long time, then changed engines and changed again. People have come in and out. And you have to remember, this is, again, a fan project. You compare this to Mania, which is officially licensed by Sega. They are behind this game 100% in the advertisement and the promotion, all and, that good and, stuff. And produced by Sonic Team. Exactly. Even did, did, Tashi did, did, did. Yeah, Yukazar did, is looking at this game. Yeah, they didn't, didn't make it, but they helped produce it. Exactly. I mean, again, I talked to Tom Fry, who was an art director, and I asked him, how does Sonic Team work with you? And he said, they're pretty good. They come in, they always check our work and to see if it's right and give approvals, blah, blah, blah. That's how it works. Ironically, compared to the Time Splitters thing, which they did get a yes from Crytek, which used to be Free Radical um, initially, and they just went off and making it, and then they changed the engine, which, again, they were okay with. But after a while, Crytek just stop sending replies back they just didn't give messages and then half the times even get people saying wait what are you doing what are you making like they're just like well didn't you know we're making this re we're essentially trying to remake the three games this new engine and there's like some of them were totally because again you used to have contacts where we're gone and then these other people are like what the hell are you talking about mate and again this is still more or less semi unofficially official remake of three games and again you compare this to say the insane trilogy or the reunited trilogy of both Crash and Spyro, you know, there again, whether you like Activision or not, and fair enough, they're probably bastards or whatever, but some of them are. Between the two, I'd rather go with Activision and EA, but still. Exactly. Yeah. But again, they're behind those games. They give them the money, they give them the time and the resources to yeah. do that. The Time Space Rerun project is done by fans. And what I've heard is that many of it is basically struggled to saying how much we wanted to play like those original three games, or do we want to change some aspects to be a bit more modernized? Do we want to, at one point, they're even talking like, why do we just rebrand the whole thing? Why do we just make it something completely different? But like I said, this is the typical business of game design is that you're constantly having to go through this battle of engine changes, development, scheduling, team organizations, all that stuff. If, it, if an engine becomes outdated, fair enough. But I'm just, right now, you talk about it, all I think is Daikatana. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of that. It does sound a bit like that. But like I said, this is what I mean by when we talk about indie developers, and this is no, I'm not taking any credit away from them. But again, these are the struggles that people go through to make stuff like this. The fact you get games like Undertales, the fact you get something like Friday Nights at Freddy's, they're miracles. They're like miracles in a bottle that occasionally pop and see yeah. everything even, again. Even Cuphead was a labor of love to a, to a point where I think one of them one of them was um, divorced during it. One of the, I think one of them had gone through a marriage. I think two of the guys behind it, the main guys behind it, actually put the mortgage on the whole game. Essentially, they based their entire premise of their fortune on this game being successful. Luckily, it's worked. Yeah. But like I said, this is the big thing you do. And like I said, com comparing Mania to the Timespace Rewind project is there's a huge difference of just making sure you have the right team, the right mind, and the right, all the resources you can, whatever you have to your advantage. Hmm. Another thing about the Mania leak as well is that it's unsurprising because this is not something new from Sega. No, I mean, let's be fair. I mean, there's one thing that's always happened is there's always leaks or demos and never, you know, it's the internet as we know. Yeah, like, what was, well, like, does this year alone, and mind you, we're in April. This is the fourth month of the year. Yeah. We've had um, an unofficial release of Daytona 3, release on <laughs> yeah. the, the arcade version released on PC, unstable. Yeah. It's a full fucking game. Yeah. A, 
exploit in the Yakuza 6 demo to a point where you can actually play the entire game, and you had to pull that down. And now we have this. Yes. Yeah, it is. It pisses me off that I did not get the update, and the fact that people are spoiling the update. But it's not something I could be completely mad about, considering this is Sega, whose lead on stuff is not very tight. Hmm. It's like a like a kid you know, put put the jab put the lid back on the jam jar and just put it on top rather than screwing it down. Yeah, the jar eventually pops open and somebody takes a peek in. Yeah, I think if someone knocks it, it falls down, jams all over the counter. You got to get a Clorox to wipe it up. And me for fuck's sake, <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> your fault. Yeah, this is and again. Remember when Sonic Four was a this leaked ages ago and people and seen everyone the worst. Fucking hit, like everyone fucking hated that minecart level and they, the re- and they redid it they redid the entire thing business yeah. yeah I do remember story I may have told this before but I do remember I actually talked to Aaron Webber at Summer of Sonic and asked him that question why the hell did Sonic 4 1 get leaked and he's saying it was on an external drive somebody got into it and they obviously like you said they uploaded it online or whatever that's how it got leaked planet, planet yeah no, partner in that, not planning that. Oh, whatever it was. But then again, that's how it happened. The fact he has said that to me, he's surprised me because he actually did answer me. He didn't give me like some sort of, well, I can't tell you because of confidentiality, blah, blah, blah. He basically said, yeah, that happened. It was unfortunate, but you still got the game out eventually. And yeah, the game came out. It actually was, people enjoyed it the first time around, but then it was like, look, you can stick on the wall. Sorry, the Sonic. Yeah, yeah, we know the, the physics, physics, blah, 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 whatever, Mega Drive, 100%, blah, 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 all that crap. Did you know that the physics? I say that nutrients laws of physics. Like I don't give a fuck about the laws of physics. Okay, yeah, yeah. is the game good? fun? Yeah. Yes. Shut up. Yeah, ideally. Yeah, pretty much. <sighs> Again, if you don't like something, for fair enough. That's your opinion. It, yeah. Uh, I mean, just be happy Mania exists. I mean, pretty much that is the fault. If you want a Sonic Four to be like that, it exists now, and it's getting and it's getting more of it. That's a good thing. Yeah. But again, the up, the update changes a lot, changes some minor and major things of the game. But mm-hmm. be able to play it, get the on call mode and the new two new playable characters. You have to pay. Hmm. So that's the only downside. Yeah. Although I will say this with the whole Mighty Ray business is that if you watch Sonic Paradox, ladies and gentlemen, um, you may have noticed that they used to have a joke of them being at a bar, totally out of their mind and basically screw Sega. Now, then they did a slight update. They did a slight update when Bean was in it as a, like a funny little boss cameo thing. Mm. And now they're going to have to update that joke again now because somebody has to do an update to that original gag. So uh, mm. if anybody's a Sonic Paradox watching this, uh, get to it, mate. Yeah, because you're doing second. Because you're doing now short second one, so you have no excuse now. <laughs> Why did the Sega shots paradox? <laughs> That's a bigger question. <laughs> I want to see some jokes about Joe Musashi or Toe Jamanel. I want to see a whole bargain hunt with the Bonanza Brothers. There, I've said it. Go on, take it. I won't sue you. <laughs> well, for the fact they were included as the unlockable characters in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. <laughs> we stole the cash, uh, stole our money, now we're in a race. What the fuck happened? Yeah. yeah, well, like I said, I mean, they look like, like a gangster men, so as far as I'm aware, that just tickles me every time I think about them. Yeah. 